strength like no one. Yes. Just be patient with me. It's something about the presence of the Father that you recognize it. He's always present. Sometimes he's magnified. Yes. Thank you. And we should not take this moment for granted. Yes. You are my hope, you are my strength. Yes. Not just in this moment, but period. Amen. And I thank you for the honor. focus this morning, witnessing the act of going, telling, and showing. Now God has demonstrated in our midst this morning the power in the body of Christ. He has invested in us, not just the preacher, 
but in the entire body of Christ. He has made an investment. And we owe him Well, he does not need us, but he chooses to use us. And it's an honor. It's an honor. So as you have so richly given your testimonies on this morning, we don't want it to be just an in-house occurrence. But as we leave these walls, we want to know who we are and why we are. A focus. Witnessing. To witness is to give evidence of. To give evidence of a presence that chooses to tabernacle in a human vessel. To witness is the act first of going. It has been sweet in here. But we cannot stay in here. We must go. And when we go, we must be articulate. For we must tell. And then we must be living, breathing, walking epistles for we must show. You can't talk it if you can't walk it. Help me, Holy Ghost. Witnessing the act of going, telling, and showing. Three component Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Jesus came and told his disciples, now we, the body of Christ, are Jesus' present day disciples. Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, therefore, powerful, therefore, it's not about you, it's about me. I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. But you're not finished yet. Then teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this. Be sure of this. I am with you always. How long, Jesus? Even to the end of the ages. These words were spoken by Jesus to his disciples, to his followers, to his students. Acts 1 and 8. But you, this is how we're going to get it done. But you shall receive power. I repeat. But you shall receive power. 
It won't be just you. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria. Now hear this. And even to the remotest part of the earth. These were the words that Jesus spoke to his first disciples as he departed to return to the Father. So on today, my question is, to whom specifically are these scriptures speaking to? Who is Jesus placing this responsibility into their hands? Now, most of us, by our actions, assume that these scriptures are speaking to pastors, missionaries, and evangelists only. But let me be clear. Sharing and presenting the gospel, meaning the good news from God through Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, is the assignment given to the church. The visible body of Christ on planet Earth. If you consider yourself to be a part of the church, meaning the visible body of Christ on Earth, then this is your assignment. Even if you are the only active participant, don't look around for the crowd. He's talking to you. A songwriter wrote, I'll go if I have to go by myself. Send me. I'll go. Stop looking around. Go. Witnessing the act of going, telling, and showing. Now, what does it mean to witness? Witness means to tell, to communicate by words and actions, just what we did this morning. You didn't know that this would be the way the worship service would go this morning, but you must be prepared to tell, to communicate in a language that people understand, not thou wouldest and couldest, but tell, communicate by your words and your actions. Now, this is God's plan to reach unbelievers yes. on yes. a personal yes. and even on a one on one yes. basis. Yes. Hallelujah. Most believers, meaning church goers, fail to tell, fail to communicate, fail to show or demonstrate because they are under the false assumption that to tell must sound like a sermon and be spoken from the platform or a pulpit. They miss many opportunities because they are attached to a singular formula. They feel that it has to come from a platform. 
from a pulpit. You were not in the pulpit this morning. They miss many opportunities because they are attached to a singular formula. They feel that it has to happen in church and it must come from a clergy and from a formal pulpit. They've missed the point and the potential power of our collective yes. purpose yes. and calling. We are all called yes. witnessing. Go ye therefore. We must come down from this mountain. We must come down from this experience. And we must go and in going, we must tell, you cannot be embarrassed, shamed, scared, out of telling. And then showing. John 4, 1 through 30. John 4, 1 through 30. If you have your Bible, quickly. New Testament, John. Four, fourth chapter, one through thirty. Hear the word of the Lord. Help me go one to thirty. Jesus knew the Pharisees had heard that he was baptizing. <clears throat> he, one, baptizing and making more disciples than John, John the Baptist and Jesus. Though Jesus himself didn't baptize them, his disciples did. The pastor doesn't have to baptize you, but an anointed, called deacon can baptize you. So he left Judea and returned to Galilee. He had to go through Samaria on the way. Eventually, he came to the Samaritan village of Sychar, near the field that Jacob gave to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there. And Jesus, tired from the long walk, sat wearily beside the well about noontime. What will you be doing past, we're past noontime today? Soon a Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, please give me a drink. He was alone at the time because his disciples had gone into the village to buy some food. The woman was surprised for Jews refused to have anything to do with Samaritans. She said to Jesus, you are a Jew, and I am a Samaritan woman. Why are you asking me for a drink? Jesus replied, if you only knew the gift God has for you and who you are speaking to, you would ask me, and I would give you living water. This is the woman replying, but sir, you don't have a rope or a bucket, she said, and this well is very deep. Where would you get this living water? And besides, do you think you're greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us this well? How can you offer better water than he and his sons and his animals enjoy? Mm -hmm. Jesus replied. We have Jesus on the inside. Yes. Jesus replied. Anyone who drinks this water will soon become thirsty again. But those who drink the water I give 
will never be thirsty again. It becomes a fresh, bubbling spring within them, giving them eternal life. That's what bubbles up on the inside. You can't control it. It just comes bubbling up to the top. You, you, you want to be dignified. You try to squash it down, but it just won't go down. It just keeps bubbling up in your spirit. Please, sir, the woman said, give me this water. Then I'll never be thirsty again. And I won't have to come here to get water. I won't have to just come to get it here. I'll have it in me. Yes. Go and get your husband. Now, Jesus has to qualify us. He has to make us his vessel. Go and get your husband. He's opening a door. Go and get your husband, Jesus said to her. I don't have a husband. The woman replied. Jesus said, you're right. You don't have a husband, for you have had five husbands, and you aren't even married to the man you're living with now. You certainly spoke the truth. God knows what he's working with. Yes. Yes. He knows you're not ready yet. You've got to be filled. Yes. You're in the right place. But you're not ready yet. Sir, the woman said, you must be a prophet. Hmm. So tell me, why is it that you Jews, you Christians, insist that Jerusalem is, only, is the only place to worship while we Samaritans, we so-called sinners, Claim it is here at Mount Gerizim where our ancestors worshiped. Jesus replied, Believe me, dear woman, the time is coming when it will no longer matter whether you worship the Father on this mountain or in Jerusalem. It's not about the place. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews, we Christians, know all about him. For salvation comes through the Jews. But the time is coming. Indeed, it is here now. When true worshipers, not just church attendees, but when true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. But God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth in truth. Witnessing. But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now. When? Now. When true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. They won't just go because it's an obligation. They go on purpose. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit. So those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming the one who is called Christ. When he comes, when he comes, she said to Jesus, he will explain everything to us. Then Jesus told her, 
I am the Messiah. I am the Messiah. Witnessing. The act of going, telling, and showing. We are all called if we are believers. We, the body of Christ, the church, are all called. Witnessing is the act of going, telling, and showing. No, you can't receive this and keep it to yourself. You must tell somebody. Go tell somebody. Our primary assignment may be different, but the intentional end result is the same. We are many, yet we are one. We are one in Christ. We are the body of Christ with one unified agenda, one purpose. What is it? Go. Don't just sit here and receive. It's called gluttony. Go and make disciples, make followers. Your agenda is to make disciples wherever you go. Where Wherever you go, we come to worship. We come to study together. But we go to make other disciples, to make fellow workers in the vineyard. Am I clear? As Christians, we are all here this ambassadors for Christ. What do you mean, Reverend? You are a representative. Scripture says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Christ. When you've seen us, you've seen the Christ. What you may ask is an ambassador as it relates to the church, the body of Christ. I'm glad you asked. An ambassador for Christ is a representative of the highest rank sent by one government. In this case, we are sent by the kingdom of God. Yes to the world. Yes. Yes. A second meaning for ambassador for Christ is any member of a particular group who represents the qualities, mm -hmm. traits, mm -hmm. and habits mm -hmm. of his or her group, which in our case is the church the body of Christ on planet Earth. Jesus said, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Our declaration as the body of Christ, as ambassadors of Christ, should be when you've seen the church individually and corporately, you've seen the Christ. Witnessing is the act of going, yes. telling, and showing. Yes. My question, friendship, and anybody else who's here that this is not where your membership is, but you feel perfectly comfortable with the body of Christ, wherever you happen to be. Amen. My question, Are we there yet? You can't speak for me. But are we, as a 
church as one location of the church. Are we there yet? We are not defined by our local address. 59 Anchor Street, Riverhead, Long Island, New York is bigger than that. Therefore, we are ambassadors. You ask, what's your title? When we get title oriented, what's your title? This is your and your title. Hallelujah. I am an ambassador for Christ. My regional headquarters is Friendship Baptist Church. But I am an ambassador, a universal ambassador. You go to Europe, Asia, Africa, or Australia, wherever, you are an ambassador of Christ. Like governmental ambassadors, we do not appoint ourselves. That has to do with the title, not who you are. We do not determine where we will serve. We are assigned. We are appointed by our Savior, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to represent him on earth while he, meaning the Christ, is seated at the right hand of God the Father. That's recorded in Colossians 3 and 1. As the heavenly king's personal representatives on earth, each of us, uh-huh. all of us, are in full-time Christian service, regardless of your human vocation or profession. Amen. Doesn't matter what you call your profession. Right. You are in full-time service. Full-time. We, meaning the church, yes. meaning all of us, yes. Do not act in our own interest, but in the interest of the kingdom of our Lord. Like ambassadors from a foreign country, we receive our instructions in a written document, meaning the scriptures. Our effectiveness as ambassadors depends upon our understanding of the mission. And we must remain on duty until. Until? How long? Until. Until what? Until the Lord recalls us to headquarters. Jesus, our role model, said, Father, it is finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. In other words, mission accomplished. I have finished my assignment. That's what pastor said. Mission accomplished. I've done the work you sent me to do. I have finished my assignment. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he, God, sent his only begotten son. Jesus said, into thy hands I commend my spirit. The assignment. For my conclusion, go with me to Matthew 25, 31 through 46. I give you a moment. If you're a Christian that goes to church without your Bible, I want you to encourage, I want to encourage you to bring your Bible. Matthew 25, 31 through 46. 
41 to 46. But when the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit upon his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered in his presence. And he will separate the people as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right hand and the goats at his left. Oh my. Then the king will say to those on his right, come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. He didn't just decide this. But I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me a drink. I was a stranger and you invited me into your house. Sometimes strangers show up in your house. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you cared for me. I was in prison and you visited me. That was your ministry assignment. Then these righteous ones will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry and feed you? Or thirsty and give you something to drink? Or a stranger and show you hospitality? Or naked and give you clothing? When did we ever see you sick or in prison and visit you? And the king will say, I tell you the truth. When you did it to one of the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Then the king will turn to those on the left, oh my, and say, Away with you, you cursed ones, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his demons. The fire was not prepared for you. It was prepared for the devil and his demons. So why am I going there, Lord? For I was hungry and you didn't feed me. I was thirsty, and you didn't give me a drink. I was a stranger, and you didn't invite me into your home. Mm. I was naked, and you didn't give me clothing. I was sick and in prison, and you didn't visit me. Then they will reply, Lord, when did we ever see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and not help you? And he will answer, I tell you the truth. When you refused to help the least of these my brothers and sisters, you were refusing to help me and they will go away into eternal punishment. But the righteous will go into eternal life. Our assignment, the act of going telling and showing. How long must I do this, Lord? Until he 
such great listeners. Now let us be doers of the word and not hearers only. I invite you on this morning to join the body of Christ. Oh, here we are. God loves you and offers a wonderful plan for your life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him Whosoever, no exceptions, believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 10 and 10. Now man is sinful and separated from God. Therefore he cannot know and experience God's love and plan for his life. For scripture records, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Romans 3, 23. Man was created to have fellowship with God, but because of his stubborn self-will, he chose to go his own independent way, and fellowship with God was broken. This self-will characterized by an attitude of active rebellion or passive indifference is evidence of what the Bible calls sin. There's only one way to bridge the gulf between God and man. Jesus Christ is God's only provision for man's sin. Through him, you can know and experience God's love and plan for your life. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, Romans 5 and 8. Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. He appeared to Peter then to the 12, after that he appeared to more than 500. 1 Corinthians 15, three through six. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. John 14 and six. We must individually Receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. Then we can know and experience God's love and plan for our lives. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. John 1 and 12. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, that no one should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. When you receive Christ, you experience a new birth. And you can receive Christ right now by faith through prayer. Your prayer can sound something like this. Lord Jesus, I need you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I open the door of my life and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving my sins and giving me eternal life. Take control of the throne of my life. 
Make me the kind of person you want me to be. Now, if you can pray this prayer, you also have the courage to confess before men that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. We invite you to come today. Come to Jesus. The church, please stand.